Have you ever wondered about the differences between Keras LSTM and a feed-forward network? It can be a bit confusing, right? If that's you, then you're in the right place. Today, we're diving into the world of LSTMs and feed-forward networks to clarify these concepts. I totally get it. Many people struggle to understand how LSTMs maintain state and how that compares to a feed-forward network. You're not alone in this confusion, and it's a common question among those working with neural networks. Here's the specific question we're addressing today. One user asked, what advantages does the default mode of Keras LSTM have over a feed-forward network with a sliding window? They were curious about how LSTMs can learn long-range dependencies and whether they really need a long input sequence length to do so. Sound familiar? Let's explore this together. So, what's the deal with LSTMs and their state management? In the default mode, LSTMs treat each sample independently, which can seem limiting. However, this allows for flexibility in handling varying input lengths, unlike a fixed size sliding window in feed-forward networks. And stick around. At the end of this video, I'll share a key insight that could change how you approach your neural network designs. To understand the advantages of using LSTMs over feed-forward networks, let's first clarify how LSTMs handle sequences. In the default mode, LSTMs process each batch independently, but they still maintain a hidden state across time steps within a single sequence. This means that even with a fixed input length, LSTMs can learn patterns over time, capturing dependencies that a feed-forward network might miss. The user should note that LSTMs are designed to remember information for longer periods, which is crucial for time series data. Next, let's discuss the concept of sliding windows. While feed-forward networks use a fixed size window to process input, LSTMs can adaptively learn from the entire sequence, allowing them to leverage historical context beyond just the immediate window. Moreover, LSTMs can handle varying input lengths, which is a significant advantage. The user should consider that while a feed-forward network requires a consistent input size, LSTMs can process sequences of different lengths, making them more flexible. In conclusion, while both architectures have their strengths, LSTMs provide unique benefits in learning long-range dependencies and adapting to varying input lengths, which can be particularly advantageous in time series forecasting and sequential data analysis. Fun fact, LSTMs were inspired by the way humans remember information over time. Just like we can recall events from years ago, LSTMs are designed to remember important information from long sequences. Now, let's look at the answers provided by other users. This user highlights the key difference between a feed-forward neural network and recurrent networks like LSTMs. They explain that while a feed-forward network with a sliding window only considers the current input, LSTMs utilize information from previous inputs due to their recurrent connections. They also clarify the concept of stateless versus stateful LSTMs. In stateless mode, states reset between batches, allowing some information to carry over beyond the sequence length, which a regular feedforward network cannot achieve. Here's the key insight I promised. When designing your neural networks, consider the nature of your data. If you need to capture long-term dependencies, LSTMs might be your best bet, even in their default mode. And there you have it. Understanding the differences between Keras LSTM and feed-forward networks can really enhance your model building skills. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe for more insights and tips on neural networks.